I fully expect that our seniors will continue to lead this football team as we go into the final two games of the 2013 uh, season. And uh, I, uh, my heart breaks for them that we didn't win our last home game here, uh, their last home game. And uh, it's just a great, uh, a great disappointment, but for them. Uh, number two is we had plenty of opportunities to win the football game, to take control of the football game, to take charge. Uh, it certainly didn't come down to that last drive, uh, the last sequence of events, if you will. Uh, offense not converting on the fourth down. Uh, defense uh, allowing a couple, uh, some first downs along the way. And then, of course, the penalty on the special teams. All three were complicit in that last uh, several minutes. But really, the game had it, opportunities to win it, uh, to salt that team away. You can go right back to the first quarter when there were three turnovers when offensively, uh, only came off, only came up with three points after three turnovers, uh, all of them giving us the ball with momentum and most of the time with pretty good field position. Um, some guys had some uh, outstanding performances. I thought Jamal Wilson, uh, his numbers, uh, you know, his numbers may not be great, but it was a gutty performance uh, by Jamal. Certainly didn't expect him to uh, play as much as he did and to have to carry the load uh, the way way he did. Mike Wegson coming off the bench. Today, uh, I was uh, proud of him uh, stepping up, and it's 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 easy to feel sorry for yourself uh, when when you go back uh, go back to the number two position. But he uh, practiced hard during the week, and uh, and uh, I thought he he performed well. Uh, defensively, we had a number of guys make some big plays. Uh, Devin Brown uh, sticks out in my mind just for him being around the ball. Uh, we did a good job on the inside. It was good to get Kevin Byrne back. Uh, I don't think he was. Uh, you know, in as much as he normally would be, but nevertheless, just just having him back back out there was a good thing. Um, and uh, Stanley Andre, uh, these guys just kind of stick out to me as guys who did some great uh, did some good things for us this afternoon. With that, I'll open up for questions. Charlie, was the decision to go with Mike was that all injury, or were there some ineffectiveness? Uh, it was mostly it was mostly injury. Uh, AJ could have stayed in there again, but with uh, uh, you know injury uh, injury leads to lack you know uh, decrease in effectiveness and. Uh, you know, it, it was just a, it was better going with the known uh, than the unknown at that point in time. Did you see what, the, what happened on the play that they called the weeping penalty? I did not see it. Uh, here's how that was explained to me: uh, that our uh, our man lined up a yard uh, behind uh, past the line of scrimmage. Uh, he jumped, which is certainly legal, and uh, he landed on top of the guys in front of him, which makes it a personal foul. That's what I was told, and. Uh, you know, I, I I was watching the flight of the ball, and uh, I, I didn't I didn't see that. So it's not the act of leaping. not the act of leaping. It's landing. It's landing on the players in front of them. I, I've not seen that called, uh, at least in games that I've been involved in. Uh, doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong. I'm just saying I've never seen it. It's not a call that you're going to see uh, very often. So uh, you would, I guess, if they called it, you, you'd hope it was flagrant. I'm sh I'm sure that's what a, where where it, uh, what what it, uh, the genesis of it is. Is, the, is that a, is that something um, g given? You know, they make the field goal. You guys have a chance to. You're at least balls in your hands. Is that a frustrating way to frustrating? I mean, you said it wasn't the the only way the thing that led to losing the game. But given you had a chance to to, to take the ball and march, how, how disappointing is it? To not it was it was <laughs> it was greatly disappointing because. Uh, I, I just have confidence in our guys, and whenever you have players like uh, Rob Blanchflower on your team, uh, you, you feel like you can. You got a chance to make a play, even if as the seconds are ticking down. Just because a guy uh, uh, thrives under adverse circumstances, and uh, I felt really good. We we're going over, uh, you know, what we would do, uh, what our play, what our play selection was going to be. Uh, we were trying to save that timeout, obviously, uh, and. Uh, so felt like if we had a little over a minute, a timeout, and Blanche, we had a chance. Coach, I, I understand what you're saying about the seniors and obviously the last home game, et cetera. Um, at the risk of playing devil's advocate, I think one could make a case that it might have been easy for the seniors to mail it in knowing that, bang, you know, we're not going anywhere. So that being said, what might you and the staff have had to do to keep these guys, to excuse me, cliche, focused and you know playing hard and taking things nice down to the end. You know uh, what? What we had to do 
what we've done is we've had these men under our under our care for two years, and uh, they know the way that uh, we've practiced, how hard we've worked, uh, how much they've put into this. Uh, none of these guys are the mail-it-in type at this point. The guys that have the guys that are left with us, this senior class, these are guys that uh, love the game of football. Uh, they love their teammates, uh, and and we have a real uh, have formed a real brotherhood on our football team, uh, and that's what kept that's what's motivated them and has kept them going. And I can tell you, the other guys in the room wanted to win bad for the seniors. I know that's cliched. Uh, you hear it all the time, but then you see the underclassmen play it like it's another game. But uh, our underclassmen. Uh, through the last several days of practice and their uh, actions and their, their their words, I really believe that they really wanted to win for the seniors. Yeah, yeah. Mike was four for four when he first came in and then didn't complete another pass the rest of the way. Is that a matter of Akron adjusting after him kind of getting thrown in there on the fly and they weren't ready for it? Uh, no, I think just sometimes uh, you know they you know guy you know sometimes you make plays and sometimes you don't make plays. I don't. They didn't change too much, uh, especially in the second half. It was uh, they they were. Uh, you know, pretty much the same thing by by down and distance. So we had a pretty good feel for them. And uh, uh, th but uh, I, I don't think that they said, okay, uh, Mike Wegson's in, and this is what he's gonna where he's gonna throw the ball, and this is what they're gonna do because the game plan it was tweaked tweaked from the last game to this game. So it's not it's not like we ran the same game plan. They they it's just they made they made some plays and, and we didn't. On the, on the final drive with the turnover on downs. Uh, <laughs> Jamal got the four carries in a row to, to end it there. Are you, are you more comfortable running the ball with him when Mike had just come in, you know, pulled off the bench a little bit earlier? Well, I, at that point, uh, if we had the right run for Mike, we would have used it, you know, and uh, we came off our last game, it seems like a, a long time ago, and we ran the ball fairly well. So uh, our plan was, uh, was to, in that situation, was to run the ball. We had just uh, two, two different things that we would do on that uh, – fourth and one situation and uh we you know we chose the one and uh uh it's not because jamal was in there or not Zoe. i mean they're both equally effective in those situations uh just uh there was really there was uh something happened uh, uh on the play side that caused uh jamal to have to cut back early and uh into the into into a defender that uh we had bad leverage on if we could have stayed on the front side it would have uh dramatically changed the uh Change the play. That drive there, that, that final drive, it seemed like you really were establishing Jamal a lot. Um, was that more of a, a confidence in your running game at that point? At, at that moment in time, absolutely. You could see our offensive line was uh, coming off the ball, and Jamal uh, threw, even though he hasn't done much work, and let me tell you, he's done very little in the last several weeks. Uh, you could see uh, he was rising up to the challenge. Uh, I'm, you know, when I look at it, he had 22 carries. That would attribute to him. Uh, uh, what you know? What a tough, tough young man, mentally and physically. Lorenzo had gotten uh, had to be helped off a little bit at the, at the beginning. He came back in the game. Was using Jamal as much as you did. Was Lorenzo not all the way back? But was not healthy enough to go. Correct. Right. It was a byproduct of uh, Lorenzo's uh, uh, health at that moment in time. And uh, you know, again, you guys know my scenario. You know, I've been trying to. Uh, uh, we have Greg Okoro, who's a good a good company man. Uh, and he can, and he went in there in a couple of spots and did did outstanding. Uh, trying to, uh, I would not, and and the, the staff and the most of the players knew uh, we were going to try to keep Shad's, uh, L, you know, Shad's red shirt if we could. But if we had to use him to win a game, we certainly was going to do that. And the young man was willing to play and uh, stood right next to me, you know, uh, for a good part of the time. And uh, but again, a tribute to Jamal that we didn't have to didn't have to use him. Yeah, and and when it happened, it uh, it was in the midst of a drive, so uh, I'm not sure I was ever able really to tell Rob, uh, congratulations. You know, uh, quite frankly, you know, you expect to tell him that in a winning locker room. And uh, uh, again, one of the just a, one of the one of the disappointments of this afternoon for me. First and foremost, you know, it's a, Akron's a good team. They played hard today. You know, they came out, and you know, defensively, I think they put up a really really great battle. And our defense is the same. You know. Uh, my hat's off to them. And talking about that last little bit there, right at the end of the game, um, that was, yeah, frustrating is probably the best word. Um, I was talking to the guys. We were ready to you know, put together a two-minute drive there and kind of getting each other excited, getting revved up, ready to go. And 
Yep, and then what happened happened, and the clock ran out, and we ran out of time. Like you came in four for four right off of the touchdown drive, and then you're 0 for 3 the rest of the way. Did they do anything different, give you a different look after that drive? Um, no, it was about the same stuff. They were mixing it up a little bit. Um, when I got into the game, they were doing a couple different things. Um, we just took advantage of, of what they are giving us, and you know the ball just didn't didn't roll our way there for a couple of them. But you know I think I was pretty excited about how the guys played, and you know got excited when I got into the game, and you know I just tried to give it my all when I got in there. Is it tricky so coming off the bench hold like that, or are you used to have to do it a couple times this year? Um, obviously you know everybody wants to play, but you know you do what you can, you control what you can control. And, you know, it's in the coach's hands. Whenever, you know, they want to put me in, that's up to them. So what I do is just try to play my best whenever I'm out there. What did you see on that, that pass to Tajay down the left side of the diving attempt to just barely get over? Yeah, I take that one into my hands. That's my fault on that play completely. Tajay had a great route. Um, he got the cornerback on his, on his heels and, you know, ran by him. No, there's a couple of guys I had to break contain and try to make a, a throw with a guy there and <clears throat> just put it out there a little bit too far. For what it's worth during that sequence where you can three to four out of four, I mean, if you can throw the ball any better than you did with that, then I think a lot of people want to see it. I mean, you were <laughs> right there. I appreciate that. Yeah. And so on. But, um, yeah, I mean, which makes it all the more interesting given the fact that you came in cold. Yeah, I try to stay warm on the sideline, and really it was the guys around me that you know made it you know possible for me to do that. I mean, it was Tajay and Elgin, those guys going out and making plays for me. Losing by a point twice at, at home this year was obviously a gut shot and a uh, huge letdown. Did you, uh, I mean, Mike was saying before that you guys kind of pretty fired up for a chance for that last drive there, and, and, and have you ever even heard of a leaping penalty before, before that? No. What, what, uh, what, what kind of what, what goes through your mind when, when, when you went from thinking, all right, we have a shot to, to make kind of a memorable drive in our last career home game to, to not even getting the opportunity? Um, it's the worst feeling in the world. Um, it's uh, an honor to receive the, you know, the record, and hopefully I'll have a couple more yards this season. But um, like I spoke on last time, it's uh, kind of a hollow feeling. So, I mean, Milt Warren was a legend. He always will be. He'll never be forgotten. Me and him come from the same city, so it's a it's a memorable event, I guess. But. Uh, Wish it could have happened a little differently, I guess. Okay, I was told by the ref that the fact that I was behind the line, a yard behind the line of scrimmage, and when I jumped up, I fell on top of uh, my teammates as well as uh, as well as Akron. So they told me that the fact that I came down on everyone, that's the reason why they called the uh, the penalty. That's what I was told by the ref. That, were you aware <laughs> that that penalty even existed? Not at all. Is that not at all. Yes, I've done it multiple times, but you know, uh, it's a part of the game, and it's you live and you learn. I won't do it next week. I, I can tell you that much. How frustrating is it for for you guys for everything going on to have to, for all the frustrating things that have happened to you guys over the course of the season to feel like a kind of a obscure penalty adds to the list. Well, uh, we really wanted this win as a, like for the seniors as well as like the underclassmen and stuff. We really wanted this win. We wanted to come out and get a win. The tempo was up the whole game, and I mean for something like this to happen, I mean it was, it's not just one play that sets the uh, the game that makes make, makes or break the game. But I feel as though we we can come back and improve next week and get a get a win. That's what we really want to do. So we can come back work hard this week and practice and get a win next week. As a defender, is there any frustration to? Force three fumbles on three consecutive drives and then not have the offense be able to turn that into points? I mean, you would like to capitalize on turnovers all the time, you know, but stuff happens, but you just stay behind your team, stay behind the offense. We just want to keep them motivated and keep them going. So, you know, I feel like they started to pick it up, like, throughout the game. So, but, like, yeah, it does 
a little bit. It hurts a little bit, but you know, you just, like you got like I said, you got to stay behind your team and keep them motivated. So that's what we do. That's how we just we just keep each other going. You know, they had our back against uh, what game was that they had? Uh, Western Michigan. So you know, we defense could have helped help them out that game, but yeah, it's a team. So we got to be hitting on all cylinders, offense and defense, a special team. So.